Hey guys, this is Michael Antonovich with Transworld Motocross. We're out here in Packwood, Washington, where we just wrapped up a 100 mile loop on the all new 2019 Honda CRF450L. So although this bike shares quite a bit of design and technology with the CRF450R motocross bike, there is a lot of things that are unique to it. Uh, it's a six speed transmission instead of the five speed that the motocross bike has. Uh, there's chassis changes. It's a little bit wider down at the base. Uh, the swing arm has got polymer injection in it, about 200 grams uh, to cut down on vibration. The subframe extends all the way back across the fender. The Showa suspension on both ends has been set up to suit for off-road riding, so it's not as stiff. Uh, it's much more plush and compliant. Uh, I mean, still has an electric starter. There are internal things in the engine to make it a little off-road friendly. Um, you know, you're not gonna be revving the bike out as much. So there are things that Honda did there, like a three ring piston, um, changes for the ECU and things like that. Being in the Pacific Northwest, you know, we knew we were gonna hit all kinds of weather today from rain to sun to dry to wet. And through every condition that we encountered, the bike handled it all really well. Um, because the bike is, has a couple chassis changes, some dimensions, it's very stable at speed. But the one thing that I found, and we, found, we figured out this was because of my weight, me being a little bit lighter than the intended uh, rider for it, the front end felt like it would push a little bit in turns, like sweeping turns. But had we made a couple small changes to the suspension that I didn't know about until later, uh, I would have alleviated all those issues and would have put a little bit more weight bias on the back. Honda knows that this bike's gonna have to be ridden in so many different conditions and it's not an all-out performance bike, it's a fun bike that you can take anywhere. It's not the most aggressive engine, but it's by far one of the most linear power deliveries that I've ever ridden on any kind of off-road motorcycle. So Johnny Campbell from the JCR race team had a lot of insight for the transmission and his input has been huge because gears one, two, and three, you can lug and manage. They don't want to lift up, but there's more than enough torque and delivery that they don't run out too fast. But gears four, five, and six, you can hold out when you're on a little bit faster, wide open section. It's not like the bike wants to sign off too fast and you're never like searching for the next gear or wondering what gear you need to be in. We're really happy that Honda has decided to go back to just a traditional spring fork. The same fork that's on the R is on this bike, but it's definitely suited more for, for off-road riding. I mean, I tried to bottom it out a couple times, be it hitting jumps or whooped out sections or whatever, and it never had the metal to metal clank. It's what we've come to expect from Honda. It's very progressive, very smooth. There's no harshness in the action or no, nothing that we I really wanted much more of. This chassis that Honda has designed for this, it is about 15 millimeters wider down at the base because it has to allow for the bigger transmission and the bigger crank and everything that's stuffed inside the engine. But all the chassis changes that they've made, it's a very stable bike at speed. I was kind of hesitant to ride really fast, not knowing if I was gonna get head shake or something, uh, especially like on the pavement sections going to and from the trails. But I mean, as fast as I opened it up, it was stable the whole way through. And I was really happy about that because that's by far my biggest fear when riding dual sport bikes is doing like 60 miles an hour and getting head shake and landing on my head. Things that Honda did for this engine, to make it so much more progressive and linear. Uh, the crank is a little bit bigger. The clutch basket is bigger. Other things that are inside, it's just so progressive. You know, we, we are not the biggest fans of the CF450R's stop clutch, but the bigger basket in this bike and the wider gear ratios, and really that you don't have to use it as much, I didn't find it fading as, as badly as I expected. Really not at all. I mean, you can just kind of, clicking into one or two gears, keep it that way and never have to change too much. So for Honda to bring a 450L like this, considering that there's such a big gap between the 250L and the 650L, this is gonna be a bike that a lot of people are gonna really be gravitate towards just because it fits all, it fits almost everything that they would need. It's fun enough that it's, uh, you're never gonna get bored on it, it has more than enough power but it's also pretty manageable. It's not this really crazy, abrupt, aggressive power delivery that you have to worry about. Uh, I think that in the next few months, we'll see much, much more with this, and the uh, dual sport market for all the bikes just got much more competitive.